Hi guys, it's just me getting a little bit overexcited again. Um, I'm in the middle, of, well, I've just recently started doing something a little bit special here. I um, I just had the little peacock that I did the other day waiting for me to do a frame. And I decided instead of having it small inside a frame, I'd work the masonite that I've got this built onto into the frame and stick it over the top of what would have become the frame. So now it's more like a cradle board. See what I mean? And then these, this area was a little bit messy. So I painted it with black acrylic ink then I wiped the nitro res over the top of that with the foam brush all the way around it, set that, and it gave me a really slick surface for holographic ink. Now, oh, I'm so glad I decided to try this. And then I decided I wanted to build these little pebbles up, which look quite pretty as the holographic ink, but I wanted to build them up into like little rocks or little gems. So I'm just roughly putting down the soft glass modeling resin. It's sort of randomly put down where my mind decides it would go. But I'm getting something really lovely in return for my efforts. It's, it's not the same as the holographic ink, but you're getting the holographic look through it. And it's actually quite magic. And I thought I'll show you this, you know, right at, seize the moment and do it right as I'm working on it. Because if anyone decides that they do like it, then you'll know exactly how it's done. I only need to show you like one or two pieces because it's really simple. I mean, this is very, very easy to paint on a bit of holographic ink in the shape of little pebbles. And then... We get our soft glass modeling resin. I'm back to gloves because I did get itchy hands. So um, even though I, you know, I absolutely wouldn't recommend it without gloves, at least with my allergic old self, I proved that it wasn't a very clever idea. And I've stopped doing it before it goes from itchy to, you know, a real allergy response because I don't want that. Now, that was... I'll pull it up and start again so that you can see. I've just pulled that much out. I really haven't done much with it. I'm leaving it really rough. You can actually see some of my fingernails and that in it. Um, I'm putting it down on that little piece and then I sort of stretch it around to the corners and make it fit. And it's very cooperative the way it will pull around so you, you can almost sort of paint with it if you know what I mean. And then I'm lifting it up and twisting it a bit so I deliberately get those rough ridges and and that rocky raw sort of glass look can you see what I mean now if I leave that to slump it'll start to perfect um, so I won't leave it too long because I want to capture that that roughness it's deliberate and you can see all the way around although this other stuff is starting to slump in the cold weather I'm fortunate because it it slums really slowly, so it gives me working time. In the summer, it's going to be necessary to work, you know, as fast as I can because it will slump much faster in a hot environment. So, now where did I do that? Take it back around and we'll do one next to it. But you can already tell what sort of effect this is got going to be in the end. I'm so looking forward to finishing it because it's exciting when you can see something come to life, you know, pretty much immediately. Again, not going out of my way to make it look nice. In fact, rough it up and then look at that. 
it's not as holographic as the, the paint. I probably already said that. But it's magical in its own right. So, one more piece and it's probably enough. Then I will continue. Probably take me an hour to finish this. Maybe a little bit longer. And when I finished it, I'll show you how it turned out. And there'll be no wondering how it came about. Because this is the lowdown all in one quick hit. But you can take it in. Actually, I'm going to take that one off because I'm forgetting to vary my height. I want some high, some low. Otherwise, it's just going to look like it's, it's not going to show the dimension. make this one a little bit lower and I'm already happier with that because it's got the very high one next to it but again I'm I'm just being I'm deliberately making it rougher than than it is because I want that really natural look um, that's going to be too big you do get used to these blue gloves the latex gloves, I find that the resin actually sticks to them a little bit and it becomes quite annoying. Now, when your hands get hot and you've been working for a while, it can stick to these nitrite, nitrile ones as well. Um, but all you do is put your hands in a little bit of water. I have a cup here. fingertips in it don't need much at all I can share that between two hands and that stops it sticking to the glass so you know just have a cup of water around these are just little tricks little ideas that are coming together my friend Kerry Thomas actually suggested the water clever lady um, and thank you Kerry it's made a huge difference you're very generous to share that with me. And then I'll put one more piece in, but I'll, I'll do it lower down. It's, I, looking through the camera, which I assume is sort of the same visual that you've got, it looks more like a mirrored effect right now, but you'll see, all I have to do is change the angle the light and you get all of the, the holographic look. I'm going to put one more piece in just to finish off this little section because that will show you exactly where the, the whole thing's going to go. So this exciting life subtle holographic coming through that so that's, that's giving me a lovely it's a really special look for a frame although in my overexcitement, I might be seeing things more positively than they are I often have to sit back and have a break and come back to look at things realistically but I've shared it with you anyway. To me, it looks exciting. I think this is going to be lovely. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I will put this up when I finish in a couple of hours. Okay, see ya. Bye.